Hello everyone, welcome back to Alfa Romeo. We are about to start the Austrian Grand Prix. We're sitting pretty snug here in fifth. We have about 20 points, well 18 to Alpine. Almost 40 points down to Haas, so honestly we are looking really, really snug. With that in mind though, last time around we did switch over to mainly a research focus. We're going to do this underfloor, then we're going to start researching, well, the underfloor as well. So we can, well, cancel out these regulation hits for mainly the cornering. The cooling would be nice too in the third year as well, but as said, we're mainly going to be focusing on, uh, you know, research from this point forwards after we get that underfloor, and honestly that should be fine. Next thing up is the Austria Sprint which uh, we're just about to start, should be pretty interesting. And in terms of the performance targets here, finish position streak is still the same, can't really do anything about that. To be fair, two drivers, uh, sorry, this one, one driver in top 10 for five races, and uh, it doesn't actually tell me how far we've gotten, but that's fine. I might also just be blind. I think we'll go with one driver in top 10, just play a little bit safely there, because we are usually the ninth best team, Qualifying position, one driver in Q3, both drivers in Q2. That should be very much doable. And as I said, we are going to be starting to just move over to more of a research focus because we have basically completed the objective for Season 1. And the main goal now would be to prepare for Season 2. With that said, if you have enjoyed the series so far, please drop a like. That helped me out a ton. If you haven't, please subscribe. That is also very helpful. Thank you. With that said, or rather with that out of the way, let's jump into Austria. Sprint quality has completed, we qualify 9th and 15th, which honestly is not too shabby. It is within expectations. But interestingly enough, from Paris up to Alonso, uh, it's basically just 3 tenths between top 7, so that's pretty close, particularly on a very, you know, low lap time track. Uh, looking forward to see what we can do in the sprint, hopefully. Hopefully we can score some points, there are some penalties, but they won't be applied until the race itself, so... No biggie there, and well, we'll see exactly what we end up doing in terms of strategy. But yeah, we'll be getting to a sprint in just a moment, uh, and if anything interesting happens, basically I'll be trying to focus on getting through this uh, season going forward, so unless we have interesting moments, a lot of, uh, well, the race footage will probably be kind of cut out, but with that in mind, I think it's uh, going to be a little bit better or going forwards with it in terms of longevity because what we're going to be doing right now is unless we have crashes on track we'll be fighting for 9th or 10th and again unless we have crashes which i will probably show you uh i think we have a pretty simple way of you know getting there so we'll be trying to get closer to the end of the season focus speeding things a little bit along here and hopefully by doing so open up that more interesting second season a little bit sooner but uh, let me know what you think about that, uh, because again, it is kind of difficult for me to figure out exactly a good mix between leaving Welcome things in the and up. taking things out, particularly in the context of, you know, the races. So with the sprint here, we're going to be, I think, pulling the medium ties and we can push them towards the end if we really want to. So it's either that or we go hard and we go full attack, which if theoretically is quicker. But, gonna be a little bit more riskier. So I think we're just gonna stick with the mediums and we'll try and get ourselves into, you know, some good pockets to make moves from. And we'll move forwards from there. But as I said, we'll be probably leaving a lot uh, less races in going forwards because we are gonna be, you know, falling down the grid order. Because, well, we are gonna be focusing more research. So, uh, yeah, I think that is gonna be what we do. Yeah, feel free to come with your opinions on that. Uh, I know some people want more races, some people want less races. But for this one, going forward here, particularly since, well, we aren't going to be scoring too many more points, I think. I think we'll be trying to kind of make things a little bit, do things a little bit more efficiently, which is kind of weird saying, saying that while I'm tracking this out. But yeah, we're going to try and do things a little bit more efficiently for the rest of the season. Uh, see if we can maybe condense the remains of the season into maybe two episodes or so. And in doing so, you know, get that more fun potentially second season so with that i'll be jumping into the sprint here we'll see if anything interesting happens we have Bottas starting in sixth in theory so we could potentially have some uh some fun fun stuff happening particularly if we can get into a good drs train so honestly let's just jump in and have a look see how this goes here in austria we're all ready to go for the sprint 
So yeah, we're not starting six. That does not look like a uh, Alfa Romeo. That looks it's like right Alfa Mare Romeo. So that is a little bit unfortunate, but that is basically, you know, the penalties not being applied correctly because it's a sprint weekend, and that does happen. So it is what it is, but we can actually deal with that. I thought it's already actually going to move here on Ocon, and it looks like it's going to stick, so that is good. But yeah, we are going to do our best here to make things happen. And honestly, I think we are going to have, uh, have a pretty good race here, maybe. See if we can snatch that one point from the sprint would be great. And as said, we'll just be moving, uh, moving forward as we go. We've had an incident from Show here. He's got some front wing damage. He's had a bit of an incident with, I believe, a Williams. Turn four. Dangerously close to each other. So yeah, we basically just suffered a tad front wing damage there. As you can see, we basically just right the end play a little bit by the looks of it. So honestly, I think we're just going to stay out here. Uh, we're probably still lost though, so yeah, I think we're staying out with that. It's not a lot of damage, and we're just gonna have to try and you know make the best out of it. But yeah, it is what it is for show. But also, it's running in eighth currently. He's kind of snug there in between the Mercs. Um, hopefully, we can just stay with them. That would benefit us greatly if you could. Now, Gasly is running in six. That is kind of potentially a problem, but as I said, as long as Bottas can. Stick with the uh, Merc driver somehow, I think we'll be okay. Um, as you see, Hamilton is kind of leaving us behind, but that is what it is. Not much we can do. Uh, we just don't have the pace here or really the tires to do anything too aggressive just yet. So hopefully, Russell will be with us and we can maybe fight for that eighth place. We have a virtual safety car. Uh, luckily, I don't think this is uh, ours. We'll see. There is a car, car in the wall. wall. So yeah, not so us, unless we... show us done something. It's Albon. Along the straight here. Basically into those last uh, couple of corners. And oh, well, following a crash like yeah, that, that's good barring to your gearbox for sure. Now, uh, Shoei hasn't had a good pace after crash. He is running quite a bit slower than Bottas. So we haven't really made any headway in the back. Bottaso has been able to, as you can see, stay with both Russell and Hamilton. That is looking very, very promising. But Show probably will not be able to make anything happen. I could pit him to put on a new fresh set of softs, put on a new front wing. But honestly, we don't have we don't have many spares. We only have one extra front wing. Basically, if we're, when we replace this one after the race, we're going to basically be completely out. If anything happens in a race, we're going to be in trouble. So I think for now, we don't really have any choice. So we're just going to have to leave him out. Now, for Bottas, as I said, he has been able to hold on to the Mercs. We have a very, very slight uh, tire degradation advantage. And generally, with that, I think we can, maybe if we're lucky here, be able to put up somewhat of a fight towards the end. Uh, it is going to be difficult, of course, but as long as we're able to run with them, ending? we should have a bit of a chance here now. And because of this, we should also maybe be able to run aggressively till the end, I think. It's just 10 laps to go. We use 36% in the first 14. It's going to be close, um, but it might be doable, potentially. Or we just run standard for now, and we tune him up aggressively after like four more laps, maybe. But we might just not have a choice for these first two, because as you can see, we are falling out of DRS, potentially. We are still safer because we crossed before the DRS line. But uh, yeah, we are getting dangerously close to falling a little bit too far behind it and we're also using ERS to keep up so it's gonna be a bit of a potential problem here I think so for now we'll just recharge a little bit push the fuel and honestly going aggressive at this point should be fine if we can get a move done now the both mercs are fighting each other as well which of course is gonna make things even you know kind of weirder in terms of bot getting a move done I think we can try what we're doing right now, and if we need to, we'll just recharge. The two mercs are fighting, and actually Stroll snuck in there on the inside. I didn't even know this. Um, but yeah, uh, we are having a little bit of a you know catch up right now, unfortunately. So let's see what Bodas can actually you know pull off here because we are not in uh, we're not in a really good position. It's a pretty annoying DRS train right now. So uh, we'll have to see here. Probably go attack on the last couple laps, something, try and pull off a double overtake. Do a bit of harvesting. 
we're gonna do we're actually just gonna have to try and harvest while staying with them. We don't really have much of a choice there. I think the time is has come to go full attack. And I think the best chance we're actually gonna have now is gonna be on this next raid, maybe. And we did get past one Merc. Now we have the other two guys in front of us. Show sure, again, he's kind of running his own little thing back there, but honestly, should probably have pu pushed up his fuel a little, bit, a little bit earlier. But yeah, I am mainly focused on bot ass, which honestly shouldn't come as a surprise. Uh, I think we are going to just have to try and push what little fuel we have left right now. Sorry, not fuel. Energy we have left right now onto this stray right here. That is exactly what we're going to do. We are going to run out of energy, of course. But we might just have been able to... We were not able to, you know, sneak in and attack that. Which is a little bit unfortunate because, well, if we had... We probably would have gotten a point. But yeah. Uh, we went too far off six there, to be fair. If I managed the energy better, we probably would have gotten a point. But uh, it's still not bad. We'll still take that. It's a good starting point for the race itself. Unfortunately for show there that he did have that little bit of an incident, but it's just front wing damage, I believe, so it's not a big problem. And we are going to have a rainy afternoon here for the race itself. Uh, full wet start, that is going to be a bit interesting. I don't think I've had that before. So it's going to be a full wet start, then we're going to have a period of inter, and then we're going to have a dry finish, so... This could potentially be a very interesting one, but seeing how quickly it's going to become dry here... By lap 15, basically. Sorry, not dry right into. Uh, we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be sticking with full attack until we do pit. So yeah. Action needed. We're currently missing car part, the front wing. We're still on car two. There we go. It is fixed. That should be fine then. So yeah, I'm thinking we are gonna do this. Uh, we could of course underfuel the car a little bit as well because we're starting in the wet. Uh, Let's underfuel it by a lap. Use that as a starting point. Because we are starting in the extreme wet. And with the amount of water we saw there with the inters, it's gonna we're gonna end up with a lot of extra fuel. So I think it's better for us to just underfuel a little bit. Uh, could probably underfuel a little bit more even. And just go push fuel for the first couple of laps. We could as said probably underfuel another lap if we really wanted to. But this is what we'll do. And we are gonna be doing the wet start here. Here among the Austrian mountains. The crowd are ready, the cars are ready. It's the Austrian So we're starting Grand exactly the same place we started for the sprint. So we can't be too upset. Uh, show is a bit unfortunate, more unfortunate though. So they actually start up to start on the Inters, a lot of these. So I guess they didn't value the stopping time here. I guess, we'll see. Well, it's up to six now. And in front of us, we only have Stroll and Paris on wet tires, so... For sure, as long as he can get by Sargent, this could be really, really beneficial for him. For Bottas here, he already is very high in terms of confidence, so we are just going to allow him to go a little bit more aggressively. And honestly, this is looking... Uh, looking interesting that the AI chose to start on the inter tires. Of course, we did have the option too, but I didn't think we would do that, so... It makes sense though, because pit, pit lane here is fairly long. I just broke the game. That is unfortunate, we're gonna have to quickly restart the race. Alright, we are back where we started. Uh, the uh, Everything is set up exactly as it was, I think, except for one thing. The fuel, which we will fix immediately. There we are. Let's see if this uh, race start goes here as well as the last one, because let's be honest, getting up to 6 with Bottas was kinda ready. neat. I see a wet tire. It looks like they're virtually mostly on the same things here. Maybe a few. Yeah, there's actually fewer wet, fewer wet tire runners. It's just Paris and us. So, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that one. We'll see. And we have a turn one incident, which luckily enough did not involve bot ass. But it's going to be negative for us, even so, because again, a safety tire is going to be bad. We need to take a box from these wet tires while we can. And that's this is gonna make that a little bit difficult, let's be honest. But yeah, Hamilton out, stroll with a penalty. 
And depending on how many laps we're going to get behind the safety car here, this could be bad for us safety again. Like, really, really bad for us. And follow Delta, follow Delta. Apparently, Paris opted to go for Copy. into tires. Keep temperatures on the front. Copy. Honestly, at this point, we have the gamble that we can play with. We can go stick with the wet here until this point. Then go into inters, push those inters, maybe do another inter stop around here. But right now, it's kind of hard to gauge. I want to stick on the west for a few more laps because I want to see mainly just how big of an advantage it is. But what a level is dropping quickly. Yeah, this is going to be inters right here. Crap, this is me making a huge error. Okay. We are going to pit. We're going to be at the back of the grid. It is just what it is. Or oh, do you know what? Because it's either that or we just gamble, honestly. It's not going to make any difference right now. So we're going to cancel these pit stops. Uh, and we're going to gamble. Of course, this could basically put us 30 seconds behind the grid, which is going to hurt us from in a different million different ways. But I want to try and gamble here. See how this plays out. We are now back in damp conditions. And we have lost our chance now to pit. Excuse me, to pit. And confirm safety car will be in this lap. Let's see how the wets do right under. The restart, it will be mode race. Where they're supposed to be. So from the get-go, Bodas is not having too good of a time here in terms of overtaking. He has actually been overtaken by Ocon. Uh, yeah, I think the wets here might not be the play, unfortunately. But we shall see. Yeah, we should have done what uh, Paris did. Just get in for, uh, for Inters. Uh, I think what we're going to have to do now is just stretch these wets as long as possible. And then go on to Inters, uh, Inters later, on, later on. With the hopes of another safety car, maybe. Because, honestly, we don't really have much of a, of a choice at the current stage. Probably made a bit of an error. We're probably going to stay out for, as I said, a few more laps here until it goes down again. And then we'll pit. So, yeah, the Inters here versus the Wets. Wets was really not the good choice. But uh, we, sh we should have taken advantage of that safety car, honestly. Currently, we are running a little bit faster than Leclerc. But again, it's going to become dry very, very quick here. And we did not gain even nearly enough time to, you know, justify being on the wet tire here so we'll run it until of course we are slower than the rest of the teams but this definitely was not a uh, probably was not a good bet let's just put it like that but this would have been a good bet we basically would have had to pull a much much larger gap uh, it has changed to damp and it's just going to get dry from this stage on so yeah get both of them in put them on into tires again not much we can do uh, we'll have to see if these Inters can actually survive until the end of the race. But yeah, this is a bit of a strategic error, and we're definitely going to come out virtually all the way in the back there. Uh, we have a little bit of a gap now with Piastri. Uh, but we do need to get by him basically as quickly as possible here. So, a bit of work ahead of us, but uh, let's see if we can make something out of it just yet. Uh, in terms of the, running these on full attack, it is potentially viable to do. And what I'm thinking here is that we run full attack, we try and make up for, well, for bot at least, the time lost. And we're going to basically be running two intercepts here as a result. We could, of course, also try and, you know, push these tires. Sorry, save these tires a little bit. But I think we're going to be pitting again around lap 35, maybe. Probably a little bit before that. But I think we have no other choice than to be a little bit, be very, very aggressive here and either go for that two stopper or hope for a safety car uh, that basically allows us to stretch these tires a little bit more. I don't think we have much, I don't think we have much of a choice here. That's the thing. Uh, we could do, of course, play it a little bit safer, play it a little bit more passively. But I think we are going to go full attack and try and make up for those errors. So I'm going to work on this and we'll see where we actually end up. I've had an incident here with Sho. He's broken his suspension. Uh, gotten 10 seconds worth of time to penalties. Does that mean he's hit two cars? Here we are down at turn seven. The cars jostling for position. Yeah, there we have Stroll. And not just uh, one car involved in that, as you can see. Half, I imagine half. their confidence <laughs> will have taken a knock. 
So, Sho actually picked up 10 seconds worth of penalties here. That is amazing. Um, I don't know how he did it, but he did get a double penalty for what just occurred. So, yeah, that's a bit, uh, bit of an interesting one. We have tuned down the time usage here for, well, Bodas, and that was mainly due to the fact that we were running over 105 degrees. We were severely overheating. We were losing a little bit more tire uh, than we were ready for, and that was a bit of a problem, but uh, hopefully we can kind of amend it now. I would hope. But we'll continue to, you know, fly to see if we can get something done here. It's still going to be a bit of a challenge because it's kind of difficult to overtake. Mind you tune Bodas up here on his overtake you know, risk taking, and I think that'll be uh, that'll be all right. But now that we'll continue with what we're doing, we'll have to see what we do with Show here. He don't really have much of a choice really in what we want to do with him. So for now, we'll just leave things as they are. Magnus with a bit of a lockup that does help us out. Bodas has also had a bit of an incident here now. Suspension damage there as well. Uh, trying to overtake the reason, so no doubt. So not a good race for us now at all. At turn one. Uh, trying to overtake the breeze here. And pulls him and off, gets tagged. Uh, it is a bit unfortunate, but that I think also forces Bodas here to probably go a little bit more aggressively on the tire wear, even as, as we are. Looks like we avoided a penalty though, but suspension damage is not a you know a good thing here. Um, it is a bit unfortunate, of course, because we were a bit aggressive. But we are up in the points. Uh, we could probably catch an Aris. Catching Paris is going to be difficult. Catching any of the cars that are miles ahead now is even more difficult. And as I said, we'll have to see what we do because now these tires now are not going to have any chance of lasting until the end of this race. We are going to have to pit probably within the next five or so laps to you know make it worth it because by lap 60, uh, we are going to end up in a position where we are going to be pitting for dries. So. Boris is going to do, have to do this entire thing where he does the overtakes over again. Luckily, his confidence was already at the peak, so he didn't lose too much. But yeah, we do have a few things that are going to need uh, consideration within the next few laps here. But as I said, one of them is going to be pitting. It's going to put both our cars to the back of the grid, of course. Uh, we're also probably going to end up getting lapped when we do. Uh, potentially, yeah. The stroll is uh, a fair bit slower than us right now, so honestly, we might be safe. So yeah, I think we'll push for a couple more laps here on these, and then we will pit onto new tires. And that is just, honestly, that's all we can do here. There's not much more than that to it. We'll be pushing fuel a little bit. We'll be balancing things. Show still has a 10-second penalty. I don't expect anything from him this race. Honestly, the best thing we could probably do is retire him. But that's a bit too cheesy for me when we don't really need to yet, so we'll keep him out. For now though, we will, as I said, probably pit one in just a few laps, so I'll be back in just a second. Interestingly enough here, we have actually other cars pitting, both Alpha Tauris did. Onto fresh uh, Intercess, same has the Hasses, Stroll. So what I'm thinking is that we are going to be pitting uh, this lap here for both drivers. Get onto new Inters, try and maybe, you know, for show, maybe get the uh, undercut on the Williams. But for Bottas here, he might get, say, Paris potentially. But we do definitely want to get him on fresh tires. He's going to have a bit of an easier time here because he only needs to overtake two cars, well, three with Norris, uh, after pitting. So it's not bad. And as you see, Bottas actually suffered also a pit stop error. The show had the penalty. So his time was basically more normal. But yeah, it's not a, not a good look here. And of course, both cars do have suspension damage, so... It's unfortunate, but we'll see what we can what we can do here in terms of catching potentially some points. Stappen has also pitted down into eight now, so it's a bit that interesting. But the AI basically did what we did; they just didn't push the tires as aggressively. With that though, we are gonna keep things going as we are, and we'll see where we're at in a few laps time. With uh, Williams here, we're catching about two seconds a lap, so even with Norris, uh, even with some of the you know. Top teams here, we're catching a little bit, but honestly, the main thing we're going to be catching are these three ahead of us. So we'll see if we can get that done. We're getting very close to that dry period, as you see here. It's damp. We have a few laps remaining. We get about four or five laps here with completely dry uh, track. And as you see here now, Feedback on track, condition. track is now dry, which allows us to potentially line. do some interesting things. You see, Russell has immediately gambled. And I think we're just going to do the same here. We're going to gamble on the soft. 
excuse me, got some hiccups. We're gonna gamble just immediately for both drivers. Because for Bodass, you can see here, we have 25 seconds after Norris. We've done a pretty good stint here. Unfortunately, can't say the same for show. He's gotten himself back up a little bit, but still, it's not great. But even so, I think pitting here is going to be the correct choice. And getting up to speed on these tires is going to be important. We don't. We actually catch up to Gasly here now in in the pit uh, stops. I assume Gasly had pit stop error. He was five seconds ahead before the pit stops. Out of that, where he was held up. So it is looking pretty promising here now. With uh, with that said. So, we might be able to catch Gasly, we might not too, we'll have to see. He is pulling aggressively, you know, ahead here. Timing she's not uh, being telling the full story, I guess. Show is currently running. Again, it's kind of a madness here. With We have Alonso in first, we have uh, Sonoda ahead of us as well. So it's kind of a hard one. We also have multiple cars crashed, including Russell. That looks like it maybe even and takes someone out yes, coming back on. Yes, we have. We've had a crash. What happened there? Leclerc and Russell into that corner. And I assume that is at least one front wing on. Leclerc looks fine. Yeah, he's probably going to stay out. Russell looks... Well, he's still in end place. So I don't know if he's actually going to, you know, pit. But that isn't our concern here, it's actually Gasly that's going to be our concern. And we are going to probably just Elizabeth save a little bit more. Uh, for show though, we are still going to try and get him a little bit higher up here. He isn't too far off for Norris, but still quite far off points. I don't think he's going to be able to make it. Everyone has now hit it as well. So we'll see what Russell elects to do here, and he elects to stay out. So. No real luck there, but Gasly is definitely potentially here up for grabs. We'll see if Bodas can make something happen there. Now, we are definitely cooking these tires a little bit more than we kind of want. But at the same time, we don't really have a choice here if we want to try and get this attack done, so to speak. Show is running into the restaurant here with Hulk. Uh, he's going to have a bit of a harder time overtaking, of course. Bodas does get his move done, which is good. And for Show here... I think we are going to just try and deploy, see if we can get by the Hulkenberg here. And we're running side by side currently. And we have gotten by. So, getting an Oris here should be a piece of cake here with uh, DRS. We do have to worry about our, you know, fuel though. So, it's still good, I think. Bodas is still ahead of Gasly, just about. So, it's not a bad one, but there is a bit of, you know, uh, confusion, I dare say about who is where here, um, how many times we've been laughed, things like that, so what has to say from being laughed, same with Gasly, uh, so we are running, well about to start last lap here once we cross the finish line, we're currently still on second last lap, so for Bottas here now, we are going to just deploy, I think, if we see the need, for show, he has done valiantly here to kind of get back into it, if we had a few more laps here, if I'd given him a little bit more attention, he probably would have been in the points, so I'll take that on uh, on mine. That Alonso is my bad. Fernando, Alonso, Show finishes 11. Uh, Alonso wins. Yes, we have the Ferraris, then we have Russell, yeah, who job, is going to fall back here, yeah, at least behind Verstappen. Really what really us securing 8 is also incredibly good for us, so we'll definitely take this result. Oh, and as I said, I did throw away a point there, at the very least. I sh if I focus a little bit more on Show, Probably would have gotten 10th, so that is on me. We did snatch fastest lap though with a 104.8. Uh, we'll take that as well. Bonus. So, yeah. If we start on Inters, we probably would have had a bit of a better race, to be fair, but honestly, we, we salvaged it. I'll take that. Alonso wins. Stroll is out of the points because he crashed early on with uh, Hamilton. Ferrari 2 3. Stafford 4th. And Perez 7th. Then we have Russell, Ocon, and Gasly. So the Alpines did gain a bunch of points on us. Uh, that's not wrong. That's going to point as well. But even so, it's still good for us. Our fight isn't with Alpine. It's with Haas and uh, teams down there, basically. So we'll take that for sure. Leclerc still leads with Verstappen second. Sainz now moves up to third. Meaning that Ferrari has gotten, gotten a grip on the championship now. Leading. So that's going to be interesting. We did have the best pit stops. We'll take that for sure. And we take the lead in the 
well, pissed off competition. But yeah, Bottas did have that little bit of an incident here with the slow pit stop. It is what it is. Can't really do anything about that. So, uh, yeah, it is, uh, it is an error. Um, it's still okay, though. We can do with that. And honestly, a really, really good result here. Now, we pay out some bonuses, but we did succeed in all our sponsor goals here. So we'll definitely take that. Good chunk of extra money for the team. Car part test entered to level 2 has been upgraded. Uh, we're going to upgrade that further later on, I think. We are going to upgrade the helipad, though, for sure. Uh, we are getting paid quite decently there, but as you saw in that last race, weather center isn't really something you have to upgrade anymore. You don't need to have this 100%. You'll still have a fairly decent, you know, knowledge of the weather. And personally, I should prefer the weather center level 1 for this game. I'll be honest, because it does create a little bit of uncertainty with weather, and it isn't too inaccurate to the point where I get angry. So I do enjoy that little bit of, uh, you know, oh, oh god moments where you start a race and you see that you are the only team on the wet. I do enjoy that. Even though, again, it keeps it a little bit interesting. Okay, so we have a month to change here, so we have a lot, of, a lot to go through. Good in Formula 1. Uh, Mercedes are upgrading the Veda Center, so they do not like that uncertainty. Haas is going to go for a strong midfield championship position, so they're probably coming for us, I would assume. And in terms of our development here, Bottas gains a point of adaptability after the run in the rain. Uh, same for Show, also point in uh, reactions. Two points out of adaptability for Miguel. I need to just double check if I actually have my voice here on long pace, yeah. That's kind of what we want to have them on. Since everyone was getting out of that stability boost, just wanted to double check. Border confidence check in. High leadership, uh, high confidence, I would assume so. Our bar test center has been upgraded. We're going to upgrade it more probably by the end of the season, potentially. We'll see. I still think that this building is probably the one of the one that's more worth it in terms of uh, what you get for it, particularly with the upkeep being fairly, fairly cheap. So we will probably upgrade that as we go. Car development update, again, this isn't super accurate, uh, particularly not after a race. Check this before races to be safe. Health pad upgrade, we did that. Up on inspection, we destroyed the suspension for both cars, so not a big surprise. And we also did destroy that one front wing in the sprint, so we're going to have to try and replace these. I don't know if we have enough suspensions right now to actually fit both cars, because that's going to see. Um, we might have a little bit of trouble with that, and the British Grand Prix is coming up in four days. But before that, though, under floor... Uh, deadline we can well it's not that we can it is that it has been finished earlier than expected the deadline moves up to 12th of july so doesn't cost it anything just a nice little boost and with it moving up to 12th of july we'll actually have one of them ready to uh use in hungary that is really really good now with suspension here i want to see we actually do have s4 suspensions for both cars so it's fine we do need to manufacture two new ones immediately, so we're going to do that. Uh, for the front wing here, we are going to go ahead and manufacture a new one when we can. Currently, we can't. Still, still okay, though. I believe. So, yeah. I think we're all caught up now. Somewhat. Just going to double check here to see that we are actually caught up. And to everyone that is worried, uh, wondering why I'm just using one engineer on my research projects... It basically has to do with cost to cost to gain. You, the most efficient use of money is just to use one. But of course, if you have cost cap, if you have money, feel free to use more engineers. You'll end up with a higher expertise gain uh, if you use more engineers. But again, that is reliant on you keeping your slots occupied 24-7. If you can't, if you're running out of money or you just want more bang for your buck, you can run one engineer and you'll get more total expertise, but you'll get less expertise per day. Um, it sounds wrong, but it, that's how it works. How it works. If you do, if you do more engineers, the projects get done quicker. You'll have a higher expertise gain daily, but you'll get less than if you ran it with just one engineer. But the one engineer one will take longer. So, just making sure that I'm being as clear as I possibly can on that. So, with that said, let us set up the picker here. Um, we are still going to be focusing on the gym training. We are gym bros for life. And I shall quickly set up this uh, schedule, and then I'll be back. Here we are. This is the training schedule we're going to go for. Again, that error chance is getting a tad too high for my test, but we are getting close to those sub-two seconds pit stops. 
we do have a little bit of a gap to the other teams in terms of bits of time. So with that in mind, we might go ahead now next month and start focusing again a little this chance mistake down a little bit because it is starting to hurt us a little bit from you know last time in Austria we had a bit of an error there that could have been bad. But yeah, I think we might need to just start cutting down the uh, error chances as well. With that said, though, we are going to be jumping into the British Grand Prix here pretty much immediately. And in terms of the what we want to go here, basically one driver in top ten. Five races should be doable. For the finish position here, one driver, top 10 again. It's just the safest one. Uh, qualifying, one driver, Q3. Qualifying position, both drivers, top 15. And I think this is uh, looking good. So we're going to jump straight into the British Grand Prix. Uh, let's see if this one ends up being as chaotic as our Austria venture. Not the best quality here. Once again, Bottas qualify 9th. Did what we expected of him. Show, however, ended up 16th. Uh, did get blocked on the run, so, so not really anything to do with uh, Show himself. It's basically just the qualifying here being not the best in terms of cars getting out of the way. Got blocked on all three of his runs, so yeah, didn't really work out from there. Bit unlucky. But he is promoted to 14th to 2 penalties, so we'll take that. So the strategy here, uh, we do want to avoid the hard because the medium is going to be quicker for the entire life cycle. The soft is going to be quicker than mediums for about 15 or so laps. So literally it's entire life cycle. So soft, medium, soft or soft, soft, medium, medium, soft, soft does seem to be the best strategy here just from that perspective. And I think we're going to be putting both drivers on this strategy and maybe do a little bit more aggressive running with this middle uh, medium stint. Could also do a little bit aggressive running towards the end of the soft stints. But again, we have a we have a track here where we really can't do too much in terms of strategy because we don't have the smoothness to really play around with it. So we're gonna run the same strategy for both and we'll see if we can actually get show into the points this time around. Gonna be spreading my focus a little bit more. And we'll just get right into it. Honestly, unless something kind of you know crazy happens here. I think we'll have uh I think we'll have a pretty decent result, hopefully. So let's jump into it, see how it goes here. We've had our first incident here, uh, as you see, Albin involved. We're currently running 8th and 12th, so we've had a little bit of improvement, but mainly due to, you know, other cars making errors, mostly. So, uh, yeah, we'll take that. Sunoda and Albin coming together. We also had a spin from Gasly, which has, of course, propelled show and bought us a little bit up here. Show is kind of stuck behind Hamilton, but, uh, well, Ham has run away. But Bottas, in Bottas' case, it's the same, but with uh, Leclerc. And as you can see, most cars are on the medium tyre. We are one of the few cars on the soft. And as you can see from Paris, they, they use soft to degrade quite quickly. But the tyre is quicker. Uh, it's just a problem getting by them. So honestly, probably should have started on the mediums here like the rest. But potentially by pitting earlier, we could get ourselves into a better position for later. So we could go a little bit more aggressive for sure in particular. He has a little bit of free air to play with. We should make that a little bit easier for him. For Bottas here, uh, it's going to be difficult to overtake the Ferrari in a DRS train that goes up to Paris. So but now we'll just have him kind of bide his time. If there's any gaps in the DRS train, we'll be a little bit more aggressive and proactive in handling that. Yet another incident here with Not multiple cars crashed. Sure happens, uh, in this case, I think like it's the other Williams. And uh, once again, an Alpha Tauri. There's uh, civil war happening. And that was almost the second Williams too, getting involved there and crashing a little bit. So nothing that really has affected our race uh, so far. But show has been closing down to Magnussen. Still gonna have a little bit there to climb, but if he can get closer to Magnuson there, just stay with him and Hamilton, that's gonna be uh, good for him. So we'll speed things along here, see where we're at towards the end. We're getting very close to that first pit stop for our team. Bottas is currently running seven due to Perez pitting, but uh, we're not really getting anything done here in terms of getting overtakes happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pitch for those mediums on this lap. We are gonna do the same here for show, honestly. And I think that is going to be the better play here. There are gaps to, you know, work with here right now. Perez is kind of getting stuck behind Hulkenberg, which could be negative for us because we'll potentially have to, do, have to deal with both of them together. But I think this is the time when we pit. Just get both drivers in, 
try and get a little bit of an advantage on these medium tires, catch up, and then do the uh, the undercut, so to speak. And I think that should work out just fine, provided, of course, we don't have too many uh, uh, too many pistol pairs here. But again, as you can see, there's some nice gaps here. Hulkenberg, Paris, Magnus, and Hamilton, Ocon. Everyone is running alone up until where we were running earlier. They may for show sure. just nice windows to uh, to kind of work with, which is gonna gonna be a good help, honestly. So we'll run normal for the most part or standard, and then we'll just tune it up to aggressive when we need to get overtakes done. So in this case, we can do it now for dealing with Hulkenberg a little bit easier. And the idea is the same here for show, and we will try kind of micromanage that a little bit just to help with the overtake chances here. Give uh, ERS two when deemed necessary. So with that, I don't think Bottas will have too many problems getting by his target. He already has, and Show has done him his as well. So we'll do that. We'll kind of manage the ERS for them. We'll manage their tires a little bit here. We're switching to standard and aggressive for the overtakes. But I think we can make this work, and we'll see if uh, if we end up with a bit of a better result as, uh, well, as a reward for getting a little bit more hands-on. For Bottas, the strategy so far has actually worked out pretty well. As you can see, he's about to jump Leclerc. Uh, but then again, they are mostly going for the hard tires, the others, so we'll have to do one pit stop more than them uh, with our strategy, but those hard tires are going to be slow, and that is going to be the main benefit that we get from this. But again, uh, I think this is going to work out beautifully for us. Beautifully for us. Uh, we have Hamilton, we have Verstappen, and we have Paris, who I like to pull different strategies. But except for Hulkenberg uh, and the aforementioned ones, the rest of all go into a hard tire to the end of the race. And this does give us some opportunities towards the end. So honestly, looking pretty good. We are running aggressive right now on these tires, which uh, should be perfectly okay in this scenario. As we should just about make it to the expected pit window. We could probably go a little bit attack too for the last like three or four laps. Still make that work. But Bottas is now retaining the gap to Alonso in front, basically. So it's still looking uh, looking pretty good here. Potentially we could sneak some uh, some good points from this race. Show still not having the same pace as Bordas, he's running 6 cents slower. And again, at this moment they are running identical cars. So we do potentially need to just switch show over and focus a little bit more on his pace stance rather than his smoothness. And I think we are just going to have to do that. But for now we'll speed things along uh, until the next pit stop. We have gotten the pit stop uh, time, straw is actually quarters, but we have, as I said earlier, retained the gap that we okay, had to... The race is not uh, over. To the cast in front here, the podium, 3.6 seconds, is still the same gap. Now that we, well, we do fit now, we are going to be falling down the grid quite harshly with that. But even so, it should be, we should be running a lot quicker than these cars for the rest of the race, basically. And I think that will be worth it for sure. We're probably going to stretch his tires one more lap because he is running in free air. So yeah, he'll be doing that afterwards too. We'll just get him in, get him on those fresher eyes and see how that works out for us so but it's probably gonna come out ahead of Leclerc maybe now it's gonna come out yeah just about just about don't beat him sergeant gonna potentially hold us up a little bit too but we are still in the points we've done all our pit stops uh Hamilton needs to pit Paris needs to pit Verstappen needs to pit so it's not all bad show comes out in 13th that is uh that's perfectly okay now we are gonna run probably one or two laps standard and then we'll run the rest aggressive just to make sure that we have enough tire life to reach the end here. And even if we go and have a look here, we have to tune this up. We lack a little bit there, and it'd be about just a second quicker. So we're going to go ahead and just do a couple of laps on standard before we go aggressively. Stand now, Bodas does have some gearbox wear, but that is fine. It was expected before the start of the race. So yeah, we'll see if we can, what we can do here right now. Again, uh, Hamilton needs to pit. He pits now. We should beat him out of the uh, pit lane for Bodas. No chance for show, unfortunately. He just, he's just a bit too low on the pace department, which uh, is unfortunately his big, biggest weakness here. But we'll see how high we can get Bodas by the end of this. Unfortunately, as I said, show is just had too slow. So uh, while, while I've been trying to help him, he's been running most of his uh, race here just alone. Now Bodas, uh, it's going to be catching up to Leclerc and Ocon pretty soon, I would think. Yeah, running 31 sixes versus 32 nines. Uh, Verstappen is just flying in front, but that's not a big surprise. He's on soft tires as well. Alonso, 32s. 
we're catching everything but the uh, rebel cars basically so we'll have to see how high can we get with the last remaining 10 laps and this is the point where we start going a little bit more aggressive and try and get some moves made so first up Ocon and Leclerc and Russell and if we're lucky we might get signs but anything more than that is going to be difficult for sure but we will we shall give it our best shot here now, because we are needing to overtake here, we are going to tune high aggression. We are going to run attack for a couple of laps. We are going to run the uh, push uh, push uh, ERS. It's just going to be a better way of overtaking rather than staying behind and not really, you know, taking advantage of the ties that we have. And we'll just tune them down at when we get the overtake done because you do gain a lot of heat just staying behind other cars. Now, Tsunoda and uh, Russell here is kind of an interesting pair because Tsunoda is getting DRS from Russell. He should get out of the way, though, and then we should be the one getting DRS and just fly by. And then we have 10 seconds up to uh, Paris now. So Science did pit, so that helps us out. But even then, uh, Paris should also pit, let's be honest. He's running 20% mediums. He should have pitted ages ago. Uh, he will puncture before the end of this race, for sure. So, potentially, yeah, we're fighting for fourth place now with Russell. So, we'll give him a little bit more overtake. Uh, do a little bit of attack here. Show is still four seconds by Helkenberg and then 10 seconds behind uh, Hamilton. Yeah, not much we can do for him, unfortunately. Just how it be. But, uh, but I say now should just fly by Russell. And that is exactly what happened. And we actually have Perks now pitting and he's out into ninth. Now, Stroll is going to be a bit of a different case. Uh, we're getting about a second a lap, but we are a little bit more than that behind. We could run full attack, but that again runs the risk of us getting into puncture territory. So I'd rather take a certain fourth than an uncertain third. So honestly, I think we're fine with allowing the car to run as it is. We might need to just recharge a little bit here. No overtake. So we have a little bit of battery to play with when we need to. And potentially going full attack could, as I said, net us a third place. But it's a bit more risky than what I am prepared to do. We'll give Show our attack here, see if we can get that 11th place. Get him a little bit more development, potentially. But right now, 1.4 seconds. It is, it is possible, but it, again, it's the risk of puncturing from pushing too hard. That is my main concern. So, uh, I think we'll just... Take it a bit slower, play it a little bit safer here. And uh, again, it is a chance of a podium, but it's one of those things where we have to, again, give everything that we have, and even then it might not be enough. Although he is on very used hards. Uh, we'll have to go now, basically. We'd have to gain two seconds a lap. To be fair, though, we should have enough time to make it work. Let's, let's just give it everything for these last few... Uh, Last few laps here. See what we can pull off. This potentially we could do something slightly amazing, but uh, I kind of doubt it. But it is possible. We are gaining. I might have done this. Just been a little bit too cautious there with the tires. So we'll have to see if we can actually get you know the move made for the end. Three laps to go. Okay, so we actually have an extra lap here. It's mean you have to count the current lap, I guess. Or well, this thing is just slow to update. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, so, where is the leader? There he is. Okay, so now we have two laps to go. That means we can definitely catch Stroll. Uh, Piazza is actually overtaking Stroll, kind of slowing him down for us. But this also means that our tires are going to be absolutely shredded. Because we have one more lap. So for now, we are going to try and take advantage of uh, basically uh, uh, the DRS here. And we are just going to have to run attack. If we puncture, we puncture. It's a risk. And we're just going to go all in here with that risk. Now, for Stroll, he too runs the risk. But we are taking a little bit more risk. That gave me a mini heart attack with the tire slightly overheating thing. But yeah, we'll push, deploy everything we have. Max this is basically our last chance. Line, Could we have gotten this if I had been a little bit more aggressive? Probably. No uh, uh, but it is me just being a tad too cautious. 
Uh, it happens. Take when you run worst teams. You need to take the points that you can get. Should probably be going for maximizing points here, but uh, let's be honest, fourth place is not bad. And show here ends up in 12. It is what it is. We need to probably, again, focus a bit more on his pace stats, honestly. But yeah, getting fourth in Silverstone. We'll take that for sure here with Bodass. That is, um, that's actually massive for us. Red Bull first. The Astons uh, just fail off the podium. And we have Paris fifth. The Ferraris in ninth and 10th is going to really hurt the title fight. But the Mercs is scoring sixth and eighth with Alpine in seventh. Meaning that we gain uh, even more of a little bit of an advantage over the Alpine. But yeah. Verstappen moves back up to the first. Verstappen gets pushed down to second. Paris takes third. And that should put Red Bull firmly ahead now. With 22 points over the Ferraris. We win the... Well, we don't, we're not winning. Well, we are winning. But we haven't won yet. We're leading the uh, piss up crew again. Pretty good. But yeah, we do need to probably focus a little bit more on getting that. Uh, wheel nut, well, mistake error in general down, but uh, I think Show had a good performance, but I think we'll have a look at what we can train and fix those pace stats. Qualifying position again, uh, didn't get both into Q2. Uh, they set both drivers 15 or higher. Show unfortunately got 16, so we didn't complete that. It is what it is. Uh, technical Chief levels up, but I think we'll probably find a new one by the start next season, probably. But we'll have a look at that once we get there. Now with that out of the way, let us have a... There was something I wanted to check. Yeah, show development. So what we want to focus is probably cornering and breaking. Get these two a little bit further up here. Smoothness at 85 is probably enough. So cornering, breaking, adaptability, accuracy. Let's go pace short runs. We need to get these three stats growing a little bit more. So we'll tune them down. For Bodas, he has okay pace stats, honestly. Getting his smoothness up is actually the priority here. So we'll leave him on what we are uh, doing currently. And that should be okay. And for those of you curious, what we are doing currently is the long run here for cornering, smoothness, adaptability, and reactions. So still, still pretty good. School simulation, uh, basic nurtures, uh, invaluable skills like creativity, innovation, stop with the inspiring presence. Basically, uh, you know, potential new stuff. Let's attend. Uh, just makes life a little bit easier. We have gotten the side pods developed now, or rather manufactured. We do have a lot of things we are lacking at the moment. So we are just going to try and catch up on the parts that we are lacking, like the front wing. I believe we might lack rear wings. We lack underfloors. We lack suspensions. So yeah, we do lack a lot of things here, but we are manufacturing the chassis, the suspensions. So once these are done, we're probably going to do underfloors, or rather when the front wing is done, we're going to do underfloors, and then we're going to do rear wing from the chassis uh, manufacturing. Again, we'll just work on catching up on parts. Regulation mode for the sporting changes here. Uh, so internal and safety testing give more to lower rated, lower ranked teams. This is actually a pretty massive increase. 20 extra uh, wind tunnel hours. You lose a ton as a uh, top ranked team. Honestly, this is probably going to hurt us in the long run. But we're not finishing higher than 50 anyways this season. So we're, most, we're either going to get more or less. But again, on the third season, we'll get punished. I think we're going to vote for this, honestly. I'm fine with this. This is a pretty massive change, though, and I'm all for it. It should make it a little bit easier for the, you know, teams further back to catch up. So let's go for it. Luckily, all our parts, if uh, pass inspection, we'll have to switch out like gearbox for what has some time. And Ivasa won the F2 race. Portoletto won the F3 race. And Daruba Vesti, Edgar, and Getha. Okay. But yeah. Uh, I think we have everything up to... Yeah, we have the, that uh, new underfloor in a couple of days. Which also give, means that we'll be manufacturing that as soon as possible. Because, well, we're going to need to. We're actually going to have it, have a spot tomorrow for that. So we'll have just one in time. But that's fine. Now, the new project here uh, is going to be research. Probably for the underfloor, honestly. I think that is the best bet. Still has, a lot of work, <laughs> has some work that we need to do on it. And if we have a look at the regulations, I believe the underfloor just gets hit with airflow sensitivity, but even that is kind of important for us. Uh, chassis isn't important for this. Side pods are very important for this. Uh, front wing is important for this, so those should be our focuses. The underfloor and red wing are kind of going to be secondary, I think. The airflow sensitivity, of course, is going to be important, but we can get that back next year. 
So with that in mind, I think we're going to do a project here for the side pods. Uh, chassis and side pods for that matter. Let's do a chassis project first. Again, the, the gains here are pretty decent. But we do need to get the engine cooling and the airflow middle in particular up here. It's going to be vital for our medium and high speed cooling next season. So let's go ahead and get this research going. And again, we are probably going to have to just focus on research from this point forward. It might seem a little bit early, but I value cornering that high that unless we do this, we're probably going to be in trouble uh, come the future. So this gives us a tad more cornering. Uh, a slight amount of cornering. We do lose a little bit of top speed acceleration. Lose a little bit of dirty air tolerance. Is it going to be worth it though? I think so. So we're going to manufacture four of these and they're going to be our underfloor now until the end of the season. And there we are. Underfloor and low stock. I know we are... I wish you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't complain about low stock when we have all our manufacturing stuff working as uh, quickly as we can. Chassis has been manufactured. We have the helipad now max level. It will help out with the financial side of things. And we do need to manufacture a part here. In this case, we're just going to get two of these rare wings running. But we are caught up on them. And with that, we should now have still a decent amount of cost cap left. Yeah, 60 million. So research is going to be, well, a lot. We might actually put on engineers to speed up research projects with that. Uh, and honestly, that might not actually be a bad idea. So the, it was voted down, unfortunately, the change in uh, safety and internal time. Uh, unsurprisingly, the team's air front, Red Bull actually voted four. But unsurprisingly, uh, I'm surprised Haas, Williams, again, it does not make sense for teams that are running, that actually are going to get benefits from this and don't really see any, you know, potential for gain in the near future to vote against this particularly things like this i feel like williams and Haas should definitely vote for red bull ferrari merc aston in this case should definitely vote it against and then you basically have the middle team so sort of like uh in this case alpine alpine and Haas. probably have a little bit more on the fence well the bottom four teams of course are going to go like yeah we're getting benefits go for it i would like to see a little bit more cynicism in the uh, voting choices, so to speak, from the teams. Which might sound a little bit mean, but uh, it is what I feel. Uh, suspension has been manufactured. I think this is what we're going to do then, is uh, just check what we're lacking. We are doing underfloors. Side pulls are caught up. Red wing is going to be caught up. Front wing is going to be caught up. We need one more chassis. There we go. But yeah, as I said, uh, for the research here, I think we might put and pull engineers on the chassis research. It's cheap, it's quick. And well, we are going to be losing a little bit to, you know, speeding it up. It doesn't actually seem like we're losing that much, so it might actually be beneficial to put engineers on after you start the project. It would be kind of funny if it did work that way, though, to be fair. And I think we're going to put that other engineer on the suspension. There we go. So we'll spend a little bit of extra money uh, to speed up projects. Meaning that we'll spend a lot more, a little bit extra money on starting projects, but that's fine. That is actually completely fine. Rare wing has been manufactured. The other manufacturing project there is probably that underfloor. So what we are going to do here is just put that on the car, and we'll have a look at what we, well, what our stats are with it on. So sort of about this car, have a bit of a look here on the analysis, and as you can see here, we're currently at the fifth, or rather third best team. In terms of medium speed cornering, we are the fourth best team for low speed cornering. And honestly, I'm a little bit surprised that we have these this good uh, stats that are these good. Th these good? This good. Jesus. And uh, well, top speed, we are the slowest. There's just no, there's no, just no arg argument for these two. But we are still getting, we're still getting good results. And that is honestly the most important part. How fast is that? We ain't gonna do that one. Uh, probably won't happen. Two drives in Q2, just one drive in Q3. Hopefully we can get the show out of Q1 for this one. But yeah, let's jump into it, get practice done, get quality done, and see where we're at for the race. Qualifying done in Hungary. It was the wet one, which allowed for some madness, as you can see here. Joe ended up qualifying sixth. 
beating out Bona, so he clearly did uh, listen to what I said last time around. So, a bit surprising, but we'll take it. Uh, unfortunately, Hokon actually qualified second, which is kind of bad for us if we're going to be fighting Alpine. Uh, we kind of have been, so I would like to keep that fight going. No big surprise for Red Bull. Big surprise though is that uh, Sainz qualified 10th and Leclerc qualified 19th. So, uh, potentially has some hits to a title fight. Alonso qualified 16th. So, yeah. The. Uh, the wet qualifying it really shaked up the the grid order massively, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see what we do with Ocon here. If he can stay with the Red Bulls and Stroll, Russell, we might be in trouble. Uh, particularly if he scores close to the podium here. So we'll have to see exactly what we do with, uh, with that in mind. However, we're going to have clear skies for the race itself. And the tyres here, if we have a quick look. We can expect the hards to be quicker than, sorry, the mediums to be quicker than the hards for about 10, 12 laps. Well, up to 15 laps, basically. Softs will be quicker than the mediums for about 10, uh, 10, 11 laps. So the tires themselves have a pretty straightforward relationship, if you will. Drop pit lane, which means that two stop is very, very viable. And what I'm thinking we do here, because the gradation is also pretty severe, as you can see. We could start on mediums, we could go hards, push them a little bit, and then go soft till the end. Uh, as you can see here, timing wise, it doesn't really change too much. Uh, but it is an option. Could also go the other way, start on softs, work all the way down to the hards. Uh, again, doesn't really change much here on how things go. About five seconds quicker. They're about all, all of these are about the same times. Uh, but honestly, here, we had. I would love to use two sets of mediums. We do have a medium that is slightly worn, so that won't actually help. We could also just go two sets of hearts and go super aggressive on the strategy. For Bodas, we can actually do the same hyper show. So let's experiment a little bit with that. If we can make that work, it could be potentially useful. So let's say that we do both of these sets on full attack hearts and we start on that fresh medium set. How would this look compared to some of these other strategies? It would be quicker. And honestly, I don't think we can actually make something that is quicker than this, and that is the thing. Uh, running those two hard stints on full attack might work very well. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to stretch the minions to just about lap 25 or so. Then we'll go full attack hards till the end. And that might actually work out uh, pretty well for us. So looking forward to seeing if this strategy actually does pan out. Because again, uh, mediums should have a bit of an advantage for about 10 laps. So while this is not optimal, the extra push that we're doing should pay off in terms of, you know, e equaling out that uh, that advantage. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, it's a bit of a gamble, of course, as I said, but I think it is the best gamble that we have right now. So we're going to go ahead and do this again, starting sixth and seventh. Both drivers in Q3. Bit of a surprise, a honestly, but we can be happy with it. We go with the Hungarian Grand Prix. So we do see red, we do see yellow, there's no hards from the get-go. So the goal here is of course going to be to just stick with the cars in front. We actually have uh, Ocon here on mediums as well. So let's see how this first lap actually kind of develops. That did scare me, it looked like uh, Bodas was about to get pushed off the track, of course a little bit of mayhem. But he has overtaken Cho and honestly that is a good thing, Bodas is the faster driver. We could, of course, sacrifice Joe here and use him as kind of just a holder for the cast behind. That could work. But I think we are looking looking okay. Show is still falling backwards, which again isn't that surprising. Bodas has that underfloor. But with the exception of that, they basically have the exact same car. And I, for some reason, have put him to harvest instead of deploy. So that explains a few things. Uh, okay, so that was me, my fault there. I switched him at the race start like an absolute buffoon. So yeah. Can't be upset at show when I'm the one causing his pain. Put it that way. We'll right, keep on running attack for this lap too. Just so we can make sure that we keep up with the cars in front. We kind of do need to try and stay here with Ocon. If Ocon wins, we uh, are going to have a bad time, honestly. So, uh, a, bit of a bit of a difficult one. But we do have a little bit to go on here for the uh, hearts here. So I think we'll be fine, hopefully. For now though, we'll still push the ERS a little bit longer. Uh, Bodas looks like he's all over Stroll right now. 
potentially uh, going to try and get that move done. But uh, I wouldn't be too concerned. I think we are in a pretty okay position already. And we're just going to speed things along here until we get to that first pit stop. We've had a car in the wall here. Norris has crashed out. Turn 12. And I don't think this is going to be a safety car, unless I'm mistaken. But yeah, that is a fairly light hit, so no problem. With that said though, show has fallen down to ninth. Um, not really much we can do about it here. He is just a tad slower. Stroll has gotten past the... Uh, sorry, Bottas has gotten past Stroll. We're now chasing down Paris. Ocon's falling down to third. Verstappen is kind of running away, so... Nothing too surprising here at this stage. We are getting close here to our first pit stop, and with Bonas here, I think we might have to jump in this lap, which is going to be a lap earlier than we anticipated. But I think we're just going to have to. It's uh, unfortunately, well, just how things are going to have to be. For Sho here, who is running right now ahead of the two Ferraris, we're going to have him go for one more lap before we pit him. He has a little bit more tire to play with here. Bonas has been running it kind of uh, uh, contaminated, I guess you could say, yeah, for quite a while, which has slowed him down a bit. But as you can see, most cars in the front now have pitted, uh, except for Orkon and Stroll. So, uh, we haven't had the best start to this race, I'll be honest. Those mediums have not been really working for us. And that is just unfortunate, but that is what it is. Now, show comes out in 12th, we come out in 10th, and as I said, both Orkon and Stroll have yet to pit. So, we'll have to see exactly where, where they end up when they do pit. We might get them just barely here with Bottas, and hopefully we will. Because again, would like to stay ahead of them. And in terms of lap times now with the Port Tank Hards, we're doing 21s with Bora. So it's not super slow, but it's still 5 times slower than Alonso and Leclerc. We're running mediums, pretty worn mediums as well. So uh, it's not great, honestly. But we'll see if we can make this work somehow. But yeah, uh, I'm curious about what's going on here with, as I said, both these two. If one of them is going to suffer a puncture at one point because they are now running those tires dangerously low and they don't seem to have any intentions of pitting so uh yeah that's going to be interesting Ocon is falling back now down to sixth uh i probably shouldn't complain but as has locked up and flown off the track which is a bit unfortunate uh he didn't really lose out too much other than just time but it is still not go. great Heading into turn one Heavy on the brakes. That is a proper lockup too, so it costs a lot of durability. So we'll have to tune down to aggressive. Uh, probably tune him up again once uh, once the tires, you know, catch up to uh, the shows. I think that is how we're gonna have to do it. Girl is still out with 14% tires here. Ocon has pitted, so uh, yeah, it's a bit of an interesting one. Let's see how uh, how the other teams are gonna do. But uh, unfortunately, we started six and seven. Don't seem like we'll be able to capitalize on it, but we'll do our best. We are going to be pitting Bonas on this lap, basically because, well, we are getting close to the pit window, and the degradation, if you look at show here, isn't as severe as we expected. So I think we should be able to run Bonas here, potentially on attack, till the end on a new fresh set of hards. Uh, he's going to come out pretty far back, let's be honest, but even then, I think it's going to be worth it. But show here, we'll just run him normally. He still has a couple of laps left in him. And Bottas here should come out ahead of Gasly. Ocon chooses to pit though, so that is actually giving us again a lot of free air. Which is gonna, you know, be very beneficial. And as I said, ahead of us here, Sainz is gonna have to pit at one point. Alonso is gonna have to pit, but Alonso so far ahead that that doesn't matter. Sainz is potentially someone we could catch, so... Looking still pretty interesting here, in terms of the, uh, the end game. Uh, again, the sixth and seventh is probably out of the, you know, out of the equation. But with Gasly and Ocon, as you can see, we are still now net in front of the Alpines with both our drivers, which is, uh, which is actually pretty massive. So we are going to be pitting Show this lap. He has had less degradation than expected, so he should be able to run these tires at the end once we do pit. And he has a bit of a gap here, so he should actually come out ahead of Ocon, just behind uh, Bottas a little bit there. So it's looking good. And a good pit stop as well. Really nice. So with that, we'll be running like this till the end. So unless someone has, you know, rocket uh, ship uh, tires behind us here. Ocon is basically on the same tire as us. We're going to be on a far more aggressive strategy though, most likely. Uh, I think we're safe. 
unless of course we have a safety car or accident. So we'll push and we'll see where we stand once we get to the end of this race. Once again here, Bottas has basically done a pretty phenomenal job. Uh, Sean has just been recharging his battery just now, so he's still doing pretty well with that in mind. We are going to try and launch an attack on signs. It's just that with our dirty air uh, weakness, we're actually having trouble for sure to get close enough to science to actually launch an attack. A uh, bit of a weakness there. What is though is going to be running with Hamilton, and the yellow that you see here is just this engine being a little bit damaged, but that is fine. For Shoei now though, the goal is going to be to get, of course, uh, the Ferrari for one. And it's going to be a little bit difficult, but I think we can pull it off. The main concern in now is actually Bottas having kind of overcooked his tires. So we're going to tune him down to aggressive until the end. Probably even standard we might need to. So Hamilton is probably going to be out of the question. If we can stay with him, that would be huge. So that's going to be the goal there for Bottas. Four laps to go. Basic 10% to play with. That's going to be a little bit rough. But he does have a bit of a gap here to Russell. And honestly, as long as we can maintain that gap, we should be okay. For show sure now, the goal is going to be to actually catch Russell. Uh, well, in this case, also stay ahead of the Ferrari. Ferrari did get him back, but as I said, we do have a pretty poor track record here with uh, Adir Air. So following, particularly for show, sure, who has a lower pace as to begin with, is kind of difficult. But uh, we'll see what we can do. Should be able with the RS to just get the overtakes done, I think. Uh, not really, which is a bit of a, bit of a disappointment. But uh, even so, he's running, you know, in a pretty good position at this current point. So I'm very, very happy with this. He is in the points. Now, as I said, Bottas is a bit of a concern here. Because, well, the tires, one, are going to go pop at one point. And that's going to be potentially pretty bad. So we'll have to try and figure out a way to do with that. Uh, show Rio Tech Science is now hunting down, uh, you know, the Mercedes, which could, of course, be bad for him. But it's also kind of bad for us because uh, Shoke can actually cause some problems here for uh, Bottas. He could also end up pulling Bottas along with the RS. So maybe it's not all bad, but we'll see here. Uh, for now though, last lap has been started by the race leader. We have not started our final lap yet. It's, uh, well, about to get started. So as I said, uh, Shoke here might actually cause some problems for Bottas. But I think with the two second gap, he should be safe. Of course, unless the tires go pop. Over the finish line, so and uh, currently, winner. looking kind of good. Tune down, show it just a tad here too. Uh, Albert should give us a DRS for the finish line, and with that, we actually gonna finish in the place where we started, six and seven. Just the drivers six. being swapped, so we will take this for sure. That is a very, very acceptable result here. So Verstappen wins, Alonso and Leclerc both make up for that, uh, you know, Q1 exit with second and third. Pretty amazing drive for both of them from that perspective. Press finishes fourth, we have the Mercs in fifth and eighth with us squeezed in between. Ninth for Ferrari, tenth for Asmane with Stroll. Uh, again, championship fight is going to probably peter out a bit with here with Verstappen winning again. So we'll have to see if Leclerc can actually cash up now. But uh, Red Bull has been looking dominant for the last couple of races. Constructors wise now, Red Bull pulls away even more. Uh, we're starting to get more gaps here to, you know, the teams. We have now about a 30 point lead on Alpine. I'd say things are looking good. We're still leading the uh, Piss Up Championship here. Both are Piss Up under two seconds. We have about three tenths, well, two and a half tenths really, to Red Bull, who's the third quickest in this race. And with that in mind, I'm thinking that we are going to start working on those errors because they could potentially steal some points from us later in the season. We do need to pay up bonuses here because both our drivers finished in the points. And we'll take that, of course. It is uh, paid with pleasure. Well, to start leveled up. Very nice. And as I said here, we are probably going to need to uh, change up our change up our pit crew. But we'll do that in a summer break. We have Belgium coming up in just four days. That's not something we need to really stress about. We had a rear wing fail. That is fine. It takes three days to manufacture a new one, which is not a problem. Ivasa is apparently a talent we should be looking at. So, yeah. Not a bad shout. And for Hungary, for share one, we have Duan and Hajar in second and third. Mini and Goethe in, well, first and second. Edgar third for the F3 race. And honestly, here, Pusher might actually be someone that I would like to 
you know, have a bit of a have a bit of a look at. So we might actually get him as our reserve from next season. Uh, he is a good talent to race. He was in 22 as well. So I'd like to have a bit of a look at him more closely, honestly. Now, we did fail the inspection here, so we'll just replace that right wing. Uh, we still have a lot of them, so I'm not really concerned. We'll just manufacture a new one. And with that, we should be ready. Now, the right wing research has been completed, and as I said, it isn't super important because it's mainly the dirty air uh, cornering that we'll lose from the right wing. But it is still nice to get a bit of a boost uh, in, you know, the DRS delta for next year, the DRS effectiveness for next year, the top speed. It's still a really nice thing to put our focus into, honestly. Uh, we'll have to see what we do though with the side pods here, of course, the underfloor as well. But the side pods, if they do lose, uh, they do lose a lot of uh, cornering ability. It's going to be kind of bad for us, honestly. So we should probably invest a little bit more in these. Um, again, they're losing thirty percent. This will give us two, two point five. So we are going to have to put in a lot of uh, a lot of effort into these side pods for sure. So I'm thinking that is the next project. And as I said, getting the rowing up to up and running would be nice. But the last lack of the loss of cornering ability is going to hurt us more the next season than the lack of being able to follow the car in front. So we'll live with that. The science center improvement. Okay, so we can actually get a little bit of a boost here. We have the condition to actually make this work. As you can see, it gives us five more engineer and two more projects, meaning that we can do every single piece for two months. It's going to cost us a million, but we have more than enough money in the cost cap. And honestly, right now, this is a really good one. And the reason why I said condition is because if the condition isn't uh, basically pristine at max level, uh, this doesn't actually work as I said advertise. You don't get those two slots. So we'll approve of the budget. And with that, we do have more slots. But as you can see, we have no engineers available. It's because we need to go to our staff here and actually hire those five engineers. And we're going to go ahead and do that. So that is perfectly fine. Of course, the contract engineers, they do cost an extra amount of money. That is, that is perfectly okay. And what I'm thinking is that we put three engineers onto the rear wing. Uh, to just speed that project along. Yeah, we'll put three of them in here. And we'll put two of them on the underfloor. Now, I haven't actually tested it to have a look here and see what happens with the with the slots here. Once we run out of time again, we shall have them for just 60 days. But I would assume that uh, we'll be able to do projects that kind of run over time, I would hope. We'll see though. But right now we do have six projects running. Which is going to be kind of kind of clutch for next season, and again we do have the finances to support this. So honestly, this is a very very beneficial thing to have gotten. Now finished position here, one driving top ten. I know the show had a good performance last time around, but honestly, uh, don't th don't know if it was a fluke or not. Both drivers Q2, basically what we're doing here to be a little bit safe in terms of the money. And we'll head to Belgium, honestly. And then once Belgium is done, we're probably going to do the summer break. Uh, a bit of a longer video today, but I wanted to kind of catch up with the shorter videos that we've had during the week. So let us jump into Belgium and see how we do. Interestingly enough, we have our first pole position in Belgium with Bottas. So once again, it's wet. Uh, it dries up quickly towards the, the quality. We stay out very late for that extra run. And Bottas just nails it onto pole. I'm impressed. I did not expect this, but we'll take that for sure. Show ended up in 11th, which is respectable, honestly. We still haven't given him that new underfloor because we don't have one. So, unfortunately, no benefit there. But yeah, for the sprint, we are going to be starting 1st and 11th. And honestly, this could be interesting for Bottas if he can hold on. But uh, we'll have to see once we get to the sprint itself. Here we are. The sprint is uh, prep for. We are going to try out the soft here, although the medium will probably be, you know, better. It actually is better. So we're going to go actually in the mediums because, as you see, a little bit better. Well, the same amount of time, but you'll have more tire left, so we run no risk of running out. Uh, we can run attack for the entire sprint. Now, with that said, uh, there is one other thing that we're going to do here. We're going to be running that damage engine of show for this race weekend, and the reason for that is very simple. We want to avoid buying an extra one. Uh, we do have we do have some cost cap to play with. Don't get me wrong, but we don't want to spend 
you know, the show is not scoring too many points, unfortunately, so it's going to get a little bit down prioritized. We're going to use this engine for the spring weekend and basically run it a little bit further into the ground. Uh, it's just what we are going to do. For, for Port Asset, we're going to gamble on him being able to make it with that one engine that he has. Although I probably should run that engine for one more day sprint weekend. But it is starting on pole. And we are going to try and take advantage of that. Probably also should get him some uh, new ERS at one point. But again, won't be here. Let's see how the sprint actually pans out. We are starting on pole. Here we are, the sprint around Spa Francorchamps. I see a Boras, I see a Verstappen. But yeah, we'll see if, uh, you know, running the mediums will give us an advantage towards the end of the race here. So that's actually a really, really good start there from Boras. So that means he'll at least retain lead for a little while. And we'll take that for sure. And we'll also be working on show if we can get him a little bit further up. But with damage engines, but generally a slower car, doesn't have the upward end floor. I think that might be difficult. But uh, we already pulled nine tenths of Hamilton here. And if we can maintain that with uh, Verstappen here, Bottas might have a chance of a sprint podium. Because, if, again, if we can pull away with the most kind of being a bit of a blocker here, ironically enough, uh, we could potentially do some uh, some interesting stuff here. So, yeah, looking very, very promising. Now, because it's a sprint, we're having fewer laps, just 15. Uh, still very likely that we'll have an incident of some, of some kind. So... What I am thinking we're going to do here is that we're going to use about 400 grams of fuel. Well, 400 grams more than uh, we might need. And there we go. Virtual we immediately have car. a virtual safety car. So, oh, as I said, no shocker. It's Belgium. There's usually an incident here involving a safety car of some sort. So, Albon has crashed out. Looks like it wasn't too bad of a hit. I think the suspension took most of it, rather than the rear wing. But uh, that is how it be sometimes. Now, we have about four seconds to Hamilton already with uh, Verstappen here. So already we're looking really, really promising. Uh, for Bottas, the main thing here now is just going to be to try and make sure that he stays with uh, Verstappen. If we can get away from Verstappen, that would actually be huge. Uh, huge bonus. But... Uh, we will push everything now. This might actually be... This virtual safety car might actually turn out to be a huge benefit for us if we can get away on the restart. Now, show is running in 11th. He's a couple of seconds behind Alonso. I don't see him catching that up. But we'll try the best we can. Virtual safety car is yes, ending. ending. Let us see now if Bottas can pull away. Uh, the fact that it's ending halfway up... Uh, DRS Halfway up the hill here we is uh, probably not too good for us. Again, we aren't good at top speed, we're better at cornering. So this basically means that Verstappen is going to be on our asses immediately. Which isn't that much of a surprise. But yeah, we'll see if we can extend this. Hamilton's actually that gone down to 2.8 now. So uh, yeah, they they caught up a lot there when they could go all out on straight. And we basically have to start accelerating in the basically middle part of it here. So that definitely had a uh, bit more of a positive effect for them. So uh, it is what it is. Virtual safety car can be both positive and negative depending on, well, where you are on the track. I still think that we should be safe in just pulling away here. I I am trying to tune down Bottas a little bit because, let's say, if it's stuff, it's going to be going very aggressive towards the end. But I think it would just stay as we are right now. We might tune down the ERS usage a little bit, but that is basically about it. And Verstappen has overtaken us. We should have the RS here, though, allowing us to kind of catch up. And honestly, if we can stay behind Verstappen and run with him, that would be, you know, perfect. But look at the look at the pace here. I do not think we are going to be able to stay with him. Two sex. There's been a crash. Lando Norris now, and one of the Hasses. Cutting it so close. Oh, the Hass went off. And... Oh, that's quite an impact between them. Well, at least they dodged it. Hit with that. Not run into it like they usually do. Uh, but yeah, I don't think if that. I don't know if that will be a safety car. Probably won't be. But yeah, Verstappen is just gone. There's no way we were catching him. If we wanted to do anything here, we would have to try and find out damnness to keep him behind us. 
But it's still acceptable, honestly. Uh, we have eight laps to go. We can run attack. We can just push. I still think we have a good chance there, honestly. So I'm happy with the current uh, scenario. Again, with Show here, kind of just have to leave him where he is. Can't really do much more for him other than just tune down his energy usage a little bit. But uh, yeah, we'll speed things up here. We'll see where we ride towards the end because, again, not much we can do. The only thing really I can do here is uh, manage the fuel. Maybe give Bot a little bit more on the attacking side. But yeah, we are potentially going to get caught out by the Mercs, I think. But even then, let's face it, if we can fight for There's third, second, it will still be, uh, still be a really, really good result for us. Uh, let us see. What we can do here. But yeah, again, I don't think there's much we can do. It's just basically waiting game now. We are pulling away from Hamilton, so at least that is a bonus. The ties will last more than good enough. Uh, I don't think, as I said, we we're going to be catching Verstappen. We are catching him by 10 right now. But look at that. Immediately pulls out 6 tenths from us. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to make here, something happen there. We've had another crash here with Stroll. He was running in 6th. That should be him out, I think, because he did hit his rest suspension pretty bad. Or he's actually good with his minor damage. But this does give Sho a, uh, a chance of attacking even a little bit more now, getting up into ninth potentially. But we have Paris on us, so that is. Uh, yeah, that's not a fight we're going to win, let's be honest. We could, of course, push fuel a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, I don't think Sho is going to have the best time of his life there. Now, with Bonas here, we also do have some fuel we can push. We have a little bit of energy. But generally, we don't have anything, you know, a gotcha here that will help us get the stopping, unfortunately. Show is still fighting a little bit here. But as you can see, falling back from Paris, it is what it is. Can't really do anything about that. And even if we were to, say, catch the stopping here, we'd still need energy to pass him. Energy that we do not currently have, so... The gamble here now is going to be straight up. We're going to catch 1.6 seconds within the next lap or so. And let's say that ain't happening. Just It just ain't happening. So we're going to just secure, try and secure second here. We could probably tune down the attack a little bit. But I think we are good right now. And show is up into well, what would be a point scoring place. But we do have cars behind here, which will we'll probably have overtaken us. Alonso, Stroll, uh, both of those are a bit of a threat. But at the same time, uh, I think we can be happy with, uh, with how Bodas has done. It is the last lap. We will deploy. And again, I don't think we have what it takes to catch up here. And same for show. He is kind of running his own little race, but we can deploy. It is final lap. And uh, honestly, running a sprint, just being a couple of seconds behind the Verstappen here, is uh, still pretty huge. Honestly. Uh, to be fair, the Bodas does have fresh car parts. I don't know if uh, Verstappen has the same. It's fairly fresh. No yellow parts. So a bit surprising, honestly, but we get Thanks second in the sprint. Over the we will take that. Joe ends up 10th. We'll take that as well. It's not a bad position for him. But Bodas is uh, impressing with a pole position and a podium so far this weekend. We'll take that for sure. Paris is going to be eating penalties, apparently. So we'll see if we start a night with uh, with show here. But yeah, that was a uh, that was a good showing from uh, from Bodas. Again, we probably could have probably pushed a little bit more earlier, had a little bit uh, more DRS on Verstappen and potentially give him a fight towards the end. But um, yeah, I think that would be a little bit too a little bit too much in terms of visual thinking. Now the mediums are quicker than the hardest for about twenty laps, considering that the you know total lap count in this place is about 44 well it is 44 uh don't really want to use hards if we can avoid it uh, software will cook in the medium for about 10 laps potential two stop here it is a very very short pit line with just a pit line pit lane with just 20 seconds of stoppage so yeah potentially it's starting on the softs start the mediums we do have two sets of mediums here that we can actually use we can start on the softs go in the mediums then go then go in another set of mediums uh on full attack it would actually work really really well here 
So let us set that up and see exactly how that strategy would play out. So as you can see, this does give us a lot of wiggle room as well. We're about 30 seconds quicker. Uh, let's see if we did the same with, of course, the sauce. It is definitely doable. It would be about 36 seconds quicker. So that would still work. Uh, but as you can see, the medium stint here is just a tad quicker still. Now, if we do a one-stopper, uh, say medium to hard, that could still even be fairly quick, but it's still going to be just a tad slower. So, also you have more of a risk here. But there is a high chance of safety cars, so I think we're going to do two-stopper here. Soft to medium to medium. Uh, we could, of course, try and extend the soft stint a little bit, see if that helps with the lap times. Nope, not really, so we are going to do this. And I think we're going to do that for both cars. They are starting far behind each other. Usually splitting strategies is a fairly good idea, uh, particularly when the good cars start close to each other. So you, of course, don't have them in, you know, on top of each other when things happen. Uh, but for this one, I think we are going to stick with, uh, with this strategy right here for both. It should just be the best one here in Belgium right now. And it'll allow us to go full attack with the entire race. Now, that is a little bit risky because, again, full attack kind of does lead to, you know, more incidents. But in this case, I think it's it might be really, really worth it. We could also start on the mediums, switch this around. And honestly, for Bottas, that might actually be the best idea. Uh, no, we'll start on the softs, honestly. We'll start on soft. We'll try to keep up with the staff and get a bit of a gap to the rest of the pack, fit into hopefully a bit more, bit easy window to, you know, regain our positions and work from there. For sure, he's still going to have to suffer with that damage engine, but that should still be okay. We've got... Get ready, it's the Belgian Grand Prix. Let's see if we can have a good start like last time. Lights out, and away we go. Is Bonas going to be able to jump the stop in here? Does not look like it. Looks like he might be jumped instead. Show maintains. No, sorry, lost one to Alonso. Not a big surprise. Bonas does maintain his uh, starting positions. So that is nice to see. And in terms of tyres there, we do have some medium runners in the middle here. One in the back. The rest are all on soft, so... But what's happening, he might be running the same strategy as we are. He might go into the hards. Gonna be curious to see exactly what he does. But I think what the strategy here is gonna be kind of... Uh, same as we did during the sprint. Never mind, goodbye the Verstappen. So Verstappen had a bit of an incident. And luckily enough, it did not take us out, so we'll take that. But I think that means that we need to just push everything we have here to try and get away from Hamilton. Because if we can get like two, three seconds ahead of the Mercs, that is going to be huge. So uh, we'll see what we can do here. This does open up the door for Bodas. If the other cars do, of course, get held up. But uh, that is a big if. So let's have a look at it. Stappen lost about 5% of his tires, which isn't bad. Uh, it's honestly pretty okay. Looks like we're going to have Hamilton to run with for this race instead of uh, instead of Verstappen, though. He is pushing pretty aggressively. Uh, show. Still looking good. But yeah, I think we are going to have... We, I think we're going to be able to leave Hamilton behind. So we're going to have to deal with him as we go. But for now, it looks pretty stable. Show is running in ninth uh, gap to the car in front. We'll see if we can close it down again. But again, he does have a fairly you know, beaten up engine. So he's not going to have a particularly good time as a result. Now, we already have three and a half seconds down to Russell. We are going to push about uh, 1.2, 1.5 kilograms of fuel. So for now, we'll just speed things along and see where we're at, where we're at, where we stand, sorry, at that first pit stop. We're getting closer to our pit stop. Um, I'm thinking if we want to pit this lap or the next. Currently, Bottas is still running with Hamilton. We have about eight seconds down to Sainz, Russell and Leclerc. Uh, the problem here is we want to get out ahead of the, you know, Hulkenberg uh, train here. We also have Gas at Ocon and Alonso, which might be a bit of a pain to get by. Uh, uh, but I think we are going to have to pit here and just follow the, follow the strategy. In terms of times, we're doing pretty well here. 47 fives. Uh, we're still quicker than most other cars. So, except for Paris here and probably the stop if we weren't held up. But I'm thinking we are going to pit here and just get on those fresher tires a little bit sooner. I still think we won't have too much of a problem getting by other cars. So 
I think it's going to be worth it. For sure here, it's also going to probably be worth it. It's going to have a lot more fresh air to play with. So we are going to double double stack. Well, not double okay, stack. We're going to pit both cars this, this lap. The main worry right now is the pit stop error because the chance is still incredibly high. Uh, so if we are unlucky, we could really get screwed over there. Looks like Bottas is safe and he's going to come out ahead there of... Uh, the annoyance, so to speak. Show there, kind of blocking the blocking Magnuson a bit, but still also comes out ahead. No press of errors. Beautiful. We'll take that for sure. That works out uh, pretty well for us here. Now, Bottas, we probably want to try and pull away. Just use a little bit of energy here to pull away from Alcon. Uh, we don't want, we do not wish to pull the Alpines with us. And we are going to try and get by, of course, the big cars up front here as quickly as possible to, uh, you know, make our chance a little bit better. So with that, we are going to gamble. Uh, we do have a real chance of a win here, I feel. So we're going to go a little bit more aggressive on uh, how we do this in terms of overtakes. So Bottas currently is gaining quite a bit here on the car in front, I would assume. Yeah, two seconds quicker. So uh, within 10 laps, we basically caught up with uh, that extra pit stop. Well, provided they stay out for 10 laps, which they won't. So we have already you know, gained a ton. We're 10 seconds now behind Hamilton. And the main thing now is just going to be to how quickly can we get by the Ferraris? How quickly can we get by Russell? And is Leclerc and Hamilton going to pit anytime soon? So we'll work on that. We'll see what we can do here. It might be a little bit difficult, but we have already gotten Leclerc. Can we get the second Ferrari here into the braking zone, maybe? Not yet. But yeah. We'll try and get by them as quickly as possible and start chasing down uh, Hamilton here. And that is going to be our goal. Now, for sure, we probably pushed him a little bit too hard here, so we'll harvest. I'll still work on him. But unsurprisingly, my main focus is going to be on Bottas. So uh, we'll try our best here and see if we can get some, uh, some overtakes done. We'll probably harvest a little bit too here, just so we have a little bit more energy to work with. We're going to lose a little bit of time here, of course, because we're struggling to get by. Well, I say that as he just gets by while harvesting. And with that, Russell here now should just be a sitting duck. Uh, we probably should still harvest a little bit, just so that we uh, can actually, you know, have a bit of energy to try and pull out of the DRS gap. We do not want to pull these guys with us because we're still doing one more stop. So there is no benefit to us, you know, helping them out, so to speak. So with that, and almost full energy now, we're going to go with just trying to get by, trying to create that gap, and Bottas pulls that out, pulls that off into, actually not the best, right <laughs> the safest, the I should say, now. overtaking zone, now this was but he does Bottas. get the job done. Can they squeeze by? Kind of squeezed uh, Russell maybe a little bit there, but uh, he's our man, so we'll take it. We'll give Shirley a bit of deploy here, although he should have no problem here just flying by Albin at this stage. So there we go. And honestly, oh, looks like the fight isn't over yet. Well, it should be done now. Now, Bottas is trying to fly away from Russell, uh, but we have created even more stretches here into the uh, the gaps here. Hamilton is pitted, coming out in sixth. So he's also going to have his own little DRS train there to kind of contend with. So I'm very, very happy with that. The more he gets slowed, the better for us. And he too went on to a new set of mediums. So. We'll have to see it. We can maintain the gaps, get you know, grow them a little bit. But the, the other medium runs here, I would fully expect to go into hearts. Paris, Leclerc is also going to be fitting soon. So with that in mind, I think we are just going to kind of speed things along here. We'll work a little bit on show, try and get him a little bit further up the field. He is now one uh, one stroll away from being back in the points. And as I said, um, a lot of cars in front here are going to have to pit. Paris, Ocon, Gasly, but the gaps are pretty big, so. Uh, Probably not going to be too much of a help. But Bottas will be pushing all that he can until that next pit stop. Hopefully we'll be able to create some create, create some gaps here that will make that pit stop less painful than the first one. Most of the other cars have now pitted. Uh, show actually ended up here behind the Ferrari. As you can see, Leclerc is here. Science is here. But most of the cars have pitted. Uh, Alonso is still doing a good job. Kind of holding up for Hamilton. But as I said here, well, as you can see, didn't really last that long, but even then, we have now 13 seconds on Hamilton. Um, we are going to be pitting before long as well, 
So with that in mind, it's actually looking really good, as if we pit right now, we'd actually come out ahead of Ocon and Gasly. So, uh, depending on if we can, you know, keep these uh, gains going, I still think we're really good. Now, Hamilton is gaining almost a full second, which isn't that surprising. Uh, Paris is gaining a lot as well. So, yeah, we're going to have a little bit hit to contend with. Russell, Alonso still needs to pit both of them. Uh, we have Albon with a bit of a lockup. So, honestly, here, Oka needs to pit as well. Gasly needs to pit. So, with that in mind, uh, we should have a pretty free, you know, free air once we come out of this uh, this pit stop of ours. We are going to stretch this probably at least one more lap, maybe even two. Uh, because right now, as I said, the only one that's really catching us is Hamilton. The the rest here, well, Paris also, for that matter, stroll now too. But I think it's better for us to just stretch these tires one more lap. And then have a little bit better final stint. So we are going to come in this lap. I think that is the best thing we can do. We're going to do the same here for show. He's not really had a good time. Can't really get overtakes done because he's stuck behind the Ferraris. Kind of also getting left behind. So we tried to push to keep up. Didn't really work. So show is not having a good time in this race. While Bodas is having probably the time of his life. <laughs> One could say. So we'll come out behind Perez. Uh, that could be a bit of an issue. But he is on fairly uh, fresh mediums. So might actually come out ahead of him. And we have a virtual safety car. That's not good. Now that incident looks to involve Oscar Piastri. It's good for it's good for show. It's Let's not great for Bottas. Right, we're down at turn five. That is uh, that is the concern here. It is. Okay, so and you ooh. can see how the cars come together. Now I imagine their confidence will have taken a knock. I imagine their wallets too. That look a look like a Congo completely destroyed. Yeah, show is pitting, taking the opportunity here. Same with the Alpines. Now, Bottas should be staying out until the end of the race. So, all we really need to do is just get by Hamilton. Remember to follow your Delta. Get by Hamilton, and we might actually just, you know, have one bus potentially. So that is a little bit interesting to to watch here. Watch for ah, the, we actually ended up not losing out to Hamilton at all. Now, show on the other hand, is not really losing or gaining anything from this pit stop, I think. He's in 12th. Cars in front still need to... Well, none of them that he can catch will need the pit. So, uh, we'll have to see exactly how long this VSC and, uh, lasts for. And potentially a lot of cars are going to get a fairly free pit stop. Also, depending on when the VSC ends, we could end up in a pretty bad spot if it ends, say, at the middle of the straight, where others can charge before they get their runs going. So, uh, yeah. Not the best time. For it, but we kind of did get a little bit of an advantage, so I guess we will be we will be happy with BSC that. Ending. Now we are just going to try and get away from Hamilton immediately. That's going to be the goal here. Just push everything we have, get away from Hamilton, uh, push show a little bit too, see if we can get uh, by one of the Alpines, and then work from there. But I assume Hamilton here too is going to be pushing quite aggressively, and we immediately have another VSC. I guess with a spin. I assume he spun and then got hit, maybe? Nope. That should be safe. Okay, let's see what actually happened with the collision, then. Now, I think Alonso this, and yeah, Sainz. Sainz. What did they do? Ooh. That, too, is going to be expensive for the wallet. Really expensive. Okay, that means that we probably can put Shield till the end of the race, uh, as a result. Show is now up in the points. Signs off. Uh, so watch for debris. I think Show should be safe. I don't think Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Alpin, Sergeant, Tsunoda, De Vries will be able to catch us. So... Show should be getting points. The, the only thing that matters now is how many he's going to be getting. So this is really saving our ties too. Um, Russell is probably on the best strategy right now because he's on the soft tire. I think if we're staying, staying on the mediums, it's the best bet that we have. It should be the best bet that we have. Let's see if we can get uh, get away from Hamilton now. You see, it's ending. Okay. At least we're not ending in the middle of a straight like some of these boys. But yeah. What we need from Bottas now is just get the overtake done, get a bit of a gap, and then we might have 
a win. Which would be amazing in an alpha. There we go. He's pulled ahead, but of course, uh, Hamilton's going to have the RSA now, so he's not going to get left behind or anything like that. We are have the better tire right now, so with everything here now being full push, we should be able to get away, and we are doing a good job of that. Bottas now at second ahead, and we're going to have him while well, he's getting caught up now because straight line speed. I assume Hamilton is going to have the RS here, and it does look like it, so we're probably going to need one or two more laps of full push to get away from him. And after that, we should be should be smooth sailing, I hope. Of course, it might not be that way. That's what we're going to hope for. So there we are, two seconds gained. Uh, we're going to push this until we're about down to 30%. And, well, we are basically there now. So Bodaz can still push the rest here to the end. We can still push the rest here to the end for show as well. And the main focus now is actually going to be on getting show past Gasly, and then maybe go ahead and see if we can catch Ocon as well. That would be amazing if we could. So, uh... so yeah, looking forward to this. We'll see where we're at in about uh, a few, well, in a few laps. But right now, it's looking incredibly promising. We have just three laps to go now. I had to embody us down for safety reasons. We're just going to tune down Seal Two for safety reasons. Joe is still battling with Gasly, uh, honestly hasn't gone well, so we're going to, against my better judgment, give him a little bit more of an advantage with uh, saying you can go aggressive if you want to. And that should help Joe here get by, I would think. Uh, hopefully on this next straight. But again, we do lack a bit of top speed, and that is really, really, you know, harming us. Because as you can see, even with DRS, we are struggling, for sure at least, to get the overtake done on the, uh, the Alpine. But now that we are going to keep on attacking, I don't think we're going to catch uh, Ocon here, to be fair. But we should be able to push enough here that we will be able to, to get things done. So with that in mind, let us enjoy the potential first win here from Bottas' perspective for this final lap. show it decides to crash out right before the finish line. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. What a brilliant win there for We can't Valtteri have anything Bottas. here apparently. And as Valtteri Bottas crosses the finish line, we have our winner. Yeah, we do. I don't think there was a single second of that race where they didn't believe they'd win it. That helmet did look a tad too small for him though. But yeah, uh, show the sign of that. Nah, winning, it, winning, is, uh, winning is more than enough for us. Can't, uh, can't have anything more than that. But let's enjoy the podium celebration here. I feel like we kind of uh, need to. With the race itself. An inspired strategy from the team there. What a well-deserved win that was. But just look at this. The overwhelming excitement for those celebrating this achievement. And up goes Valtteri Bottas, joining our podium trio for the weekend. That gives them their first win of the season, and it was really well-deserved. And there you have it. A smiley podium lineup at the Belgian Grand Prix.
the Botham Fair podium. Hello then, Karu. In terms of the Alfa Romeo team, how will they be feeling after that? They'll be absolutely delighted to have picked up the win here. What a great outcome that is for the team. Yeah, I think we'll agree with that. We'll be absolutely delighted. We didn't get past the slap, but let's be honest, that is not a concern at this moment. Bottas wins Belgium. He gets pole, he gets second place in the sprint, and he wins in the race itself. Very much helped by the uh, spin with Verstappen here. Let's be honest, if Verstappen hadn't spun, I don't think we would have had a chance altogether. Show, of course, decided that winning uh, was too much. Couldn't celebrate two cars uh, finishing the race either. So, yeah, we'll take that, though, honestly. Hamilton and Russell second and fourth. Pretty good here for Mercedes. Paris third. Have a stop in seventh. Kind of a recovery drive, so still decent. Ferrari fifth with Leclerc. Sixth with Stroll. Alpine's both in points. Haskell's points here. And we had Heinz and Fernando taking each other out. And we had the McLarens taking each other out. And then Show just taking himself out. So, a bit of fortune there. Bottas, though. Gains another 25 points, putting up to over 100 points in the first season, which is honestly pretty respectable, I'd say. We're halfway through. Constructors then, we move up uh, now to about uh, 50 points ahead of Alpine, meaning that fifth could potentially be settled at this stage, particularly if we can keep this up. Uh, Red Bull still maintains the lead because, well, the Ferrari crashed out, the Aston crashed out, so they didn't get a lot of points. But Merck now is kind of clawing their way back into the fight for third and, uh, well, let's face it, that's all that they could fight for here. Pair supplies were still the quickest, so, again, very lucky this weekend that we didn't have any arrows. So I think we do need to probably start getting that arrow chance down if we're going to keep on winning. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take that for sure. This is board review, chassis made, uh, I guess we're on target, we scored podiums at 25% of season races, I guess we'll be fine with that. But we are going to be ending this episode here, we'll see what uh, damage show roth upon the car next time around. This is probably a bit longer than anticipated, but again, we'll have a bit longer episodes than weekend, there'll probably be a bit of a longer one tomorrow, and uh, well, I'm still working on the race strategy video because I kind of want to add a few more races because generally your race strategy is what I just showed you at Belgium. Do the most aggressive strategy you can and you'll generally have a very very good time. Uh, it might be, I said it might need a little bit of a rebalance, it's a bit too strong right now. Attack should definitely eat more of your tires if you are overheating them as well. So yeah, probably needs a bit of a rebalance but it worked out really really well for us here. If you have uh, enjoyed this video please like and subscribe, that helps me out a ton. And I hope to see you around next time. Was this surprise good enough for you? Bye-bye.